Use correct notation. Alfred North Whitehead was a great English mathematician and philosopher. Here's a quote. By relieving the brain of all unnecessary work, a good notation sets it free to concentrate on more advanced problems and, in effect, increases the mental power. Notation is the symbolic system used to represent and communicate mathematical ideas. It turns out how we write something down really makes a difference to the meaning. Consider the phrase, let's eat, Grandma, can make a very big difference where the comma is placed. I want to illustrate this further. Remember your Roman numerals, M is 1000, D is 500, C is 100, L is 50, X is 10, and I is 1? Now I'm going to give you a problem, but you can't change it to decimal numbers. Divide MCCIV by LII. You can't change to decimal numbers. How you write something down really matters to how you can think about it. Of course, that's 1204 divided by 52. So much easier nowadays. Now let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. First, let's talk about the good or correct notation, and you will often see examples of this in your student solution manuals. If a problem says simplify, you can't solve it. You can't end up with x equals 5. All you can do is rewrite it. So you begin with the original expression, and then you line up equal signs on the left. It's not correct to leave the equal signs off. If the problem says solve, you are likely going to be able to find an answer. You show equivalent equations by lining up the equal signs. You know that this is an equation that can be solved because it begins with an equal sign. And at the end, we see the solution set. When we have a solve of an inequality, we use a similar idea to when we're solving an equation. Line up the inequalities uh, for correct notation, and then at the end we're showing the answer in both interval notation and as a graph. Let's consider incorrect notation. Here a student is attempting to multiply two binomials, and they've got a lot of rainbows above. That is not correct notation. It might help you to think, but don't put that in your finished product and there are no equal signs. Now let's look at the correct way of doing this. If you want to use the rainbows, mark off a separate area that is for scratch work. So your grader, your teacher, is not confused about what you're doing. I've also seen people use these squares. If you want to use those, put them in your scratch area. The correct notation is to write the beginning multiplication and then line up the equal signs until you get the answer. Another problem I've seen is people doing this. This is not incorrect thinking, but it is incorrect notation. You shouldn't have anything written under your equation. Use a scratch area or a scratch pad. The correct notation lines up the equal signs to show equivalent equations and ends with the answer in the solution set. Don't use any mathematical symbol, in fact any symbol, unless you're absolutely certain you know what it means. This is an incorrect use of an arrow. It should be an equal sign. I want you to have consideration for your grader. Sometimes that's going to be me. I often see this kind of thing where a student thinks that they're saving paper. But where does one problem start and the other one end? This is supposed to be problem four. This is supposed to be problem five. And this is problem six. Don't do this to your grader. Leave plenty of white space between problems. If you want to use two columns, that is not a problem. But leave plenty of white space and clearly label your question number. I see these kind of crazy arrows sometimes. Don't do that. You need to rewrite it or clearly label your question number. Some real life examples. Chaotic annotation. Just stuff written all over the place and the improper use of equal signs often no equal signs at all. So we're going to begin with an example. Find and simplify the difference quotient for the function. f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. And remember the formula is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now I'm not going to teach you how to work this problem. I'm going to talk about how to write this problem down correctly. Well, we know what 
we have to do in this problem is find the difference quotient. So the first thing we want to do is write down what we're seeking, f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Now I'm going to make a claim that what I'm going to write down on the other side of this equal sign is this difference quotient. And in order to organize my thoughts, I'm going to put the f of x plus h in this square brackets. So that's 2 instead of x, x plus h, all squared, plus 3x plus h plus 4. So everything in there is actually the f of x plus h. And now I'm going to make sure that I don't get myself confused. This is just the f of x. So it's 2x squared plus 3x plus 4, and that all of that is divided by h. Now I can't just go around ignoring all of that. I could work out f of x plus h and then separately work out f of x and then plug them into this formula, but I better write down that's clearly what I'm doing. Now I'm going to line up my equal signs. That means I have, I'm claiming that the line above is equal to the next line that I'm going to write down. So this is 2, and I order of operations says I better square this first, so it's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 4. Now all of that's still just my f of x plus h, and now I'm going to go ahead and just distribute this negative sign, so it's minus 2x squared minus 3x minus 4 all over h. Now I can't just drop the h if I feel like doing it. And now if I want to get rid of that square bracket that I put in there indicating all of that is the f of x plus h, I better distribute the 2. So I have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 4 minus 2x squared minus 3x and minus 4. And I can't just decide to drop the denominator. I've got to keep that denominator going. And what I might do next is to think about what is going to get summed up to zero. Now I want you to notice I've got a nice line of equal signs here. I'm clearly delineating f of x plus h here and just f of x here, all divided by h. So this I notice and this will sum up to zero. This and this will sum up to zero and this and this will sum up to zero. And now what I need to do is continue to work this problem and I'm going to claim, I'm going to put an equal sign here, and I'm going to write my simplified equation down. Now when I line up the equal signs, that's indicating that I think the line above is equal to the line below. So I have 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3h all divided by h. Now. I can simplify this one more time, and I do not cross out and say I'm cancelling things. In order to cancel, I have to have a factor of 1. So can I factor anything out of this top here, out of the numerator? Yes. I could factor out an h, and that would give me 4x plus 2h plus 3, wouldn't it? All divided by h. I'm going to put the h over here because it it's very clear now that h divided by h is just 1. So my last and final thing I'm going to write down is 4x plus 2h plus 3. And that is my final answer without the denominator. Now let's look at this. I've lined up my equal signs. I've used equal signs. I've lined up my equal signs. On the left-hand side, I've said what the equation is that I'm working on. I've clearly delineated what's the f of x plus h, and I've subtracted the f of x. And I have to do this very carefully, and I've lined up all my equal signs. It's very clear what I'm doing and what I'm thinking. Now let's look at some things that are incorrect. Now this student has actually got the right answer here, but sh definitely should lose points for very bad and confused notation. So I 
think I have to guess and figure out what the person's thinking. And I see that I think this right here is probably, there's no equal sign, so I don't know. I think this is probably f of x plus h right here. And this is f of x plus h. So this is kind of separate from what I see over there on the left-hand side, but I have to figure that out. And now I see f of x plus h minus f of x comes down here. So this is confused. It's not properly annotated. They did at least put in the uh, denominator, so that's good. So this, once we've added up everything that's going to sum up to zero, will give me this equation right here. And now this student is using an arrow. Now, don't use an arrow. An arrow has a very specific mathematical meaning. And it's not appropriate here. What the student should have done is write another equal sign and write the correct answer, which is 4x plus 2h plus 3, underneath, instead of all this right here. Here's another example of pretty poor notation. It's very, very difficult for me to follow this. Um, the student has done actually quite a few things right, but it's so confused they have got the wrong answer. So it, I, I'm guessing, again, there's no equal signs, so that's the first problem. Where are the equal signs? And this here looks probably like f of x plus h right here, I'm going to guess. So all of this is f of x plus h here, but it's not clearly indicated. Well, I'll keep going here. And this looks like the f of x. So f of x, and there's, no, there's an h here, but it's very hard to see. There's no equal sign. So if they'd written all of that and put an equal sign, that would be quite a good thing, but they did not do that. Now suddenly the denominator has disappeared here. So where's the denominator? Totally missing. And they've multiplied out the x plus h squared, so that's good, plus x and, and all of this. So this is actually correct, but there's no denominator. There's no equal signs, and it's actually got very little to do with the line above. Now we've got a denominator that's reappeared, so that's good, I guess. Denominator's back, and now we couldn't use an equal sign because we've got this thing in the middle, and it's not equal to that. Um, so they're doing quite well, but can you see how the notation problem here is really getting in the way of their thinking? They've actually got most of the hard work done here, and the student has not got this answered correctly. So they've added up you know, stuff. They've left out the minus 5 and the plus 5. So I'd say that this should be a minus 5 here and a plus 5 here. So that's a problem. They do have the h in there. That would, of course, cross out. But they can't put an equal sign because of this problem here. And now they've got down here, and it's just completely uh, kind of messed up here. So we've got a problem here, and there's no equal signs again. And their bad notation has meant they, they just haven't got very many points at all, maybe just a few points because they've, they've started out well, but because their notation's so disorganized, and that means their thinking is disorganized, they've got very few points. They have not come up with the right answer at all. Now let's look at a student who did, solved this a different, or wrote it down a dif differently than what I did at the beginning, but nevertheless is perfectly correct. What they did is write down the function first of all, so there's the f of x. And they've clearly used equal signs. I can see that they mean f of x and they've re rewritten it. Then they've told me, oh, I'm going to work out f of x plus h, and they've worked all of that out first. And now they've rewritten the difference quotient here. I've got the appropriate equal sign. And now if I'm going to claim that this equals this, then I must have the uh, denominator here. And they've gone ahead and added up everything that, or crossed out everything that added up to zero. And then they've got this amount here. Notice now they've factored out the h so they can go ahead and cancel. And even though this student hasn't lined up all the equal signs, that would be my only complaint there. Perhaps they didn't have enough space in the exam, and it would be perfectly all right to do what they did here, because it's very clear to see, and they did line up this equal sign with this equal sign, which would indicate to me there's probably not quite enough space on the exam to do this. So this one was good. Four points. All the points. Ten out of ten points. Good job.
So in summary, think about a notation checklist. Have you used equal signs appropriately? Don't leave them out. Use white space between questions to clearly show the difference. Don't use arrows or any symbol unless you're completely positive you know what the mathematical meaning is. Use a solution set when you're solving an equation. And if needed, use a separate scratch area or scratch paper. Just make it very clear what is your correct answer and what is your scratch work.